I took the marriage vow In sickness and in health I said I'll do For richer or poorer Till death asked to part And you said that you'll honour and obey me too But it wasn't very long before I soon found out No one who wore the trousers was you Now after all these years at last I'm pushing you about But in sickness and in health I love you I don't know what's the matter with these glasses. I don't see about a see out of them like I used to. You're always complaining about them glasses lately. Must be something wrong with your eyes. Nothing wrong with my eyes. Same glasses you've always had. They're the same eyes I've always had. <laughs> They're getting older. They're no older than the rest of me. Well, none of you is as young as it used to be. Look, there's nothing wrong with my eyes. It's just small print, that's all this. It's a small print. I, I don't see anybody to be able to read the small print, that's all. I wear the glasses just for reading small print, that's all. Well. You have to wear glasses for everything. You can't see nothing without your glasses. Who can't? You can't. I can see without my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you. I can see that table. I can see that chair. Bloody hell. Who <laughs> put that thing there? <clears throat> you can see so well without your glasses. Why do you wear them all the time? I didn't say see so well without them. I said I can see without them, didn't I? Yeah, you can't. What are you doing? I'm having a clear out. All I said was I, I can see better with them, that's all. But what I'm saying now is something seems to have gone wrong with them. Because I'm reading this small print and I don't know, I, I can't see them head and a tail of it. Well, don't read it. Well, I want to read it. It's a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody might have dropped atom bomb on us. I want to know. <laughs> be in the small print. I don't know! <laughs> I don't know what might be in a small print, do I? I can't see it with these bleating glasses. Then it must be your eyes, pig. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it must be my eyes. Because that's what you want, isn't it? Isn't it? Couldn't be the glasses, could it? Oh, no, no. Because that wouldn't please you so much if it was my glasses that's packing up, would it? Hey. And makes you a lot happier if it's my eyes that are packing up, doesn't it? Well, I'd be happier if you went and saw someone about your eyes. I don't want you bashing me into things when you're pushing me in the wheelchair. No. <laughs> oh, you want the truth? It's national health glasses, that's what it is. You belong to a crappy health service, you get crappy glasses. <laughs> <laughs> You've had those glasses since long before the health service. Well, nothing lasts, do it? <laughs> You took them over when your granny died. Well? <laughs> you can't waste things, can you? Waste not, what not? Hey, look, you, you try looking through them. Go on. <laughs> they're no good for my eyes. No, they're no good for my eyes, neither. You could try cleaning them. Yeah. Look at that. I wouldn't be surprised if they ain't printing the words smaller, you know. <laughs> you get more of them on a page. <laughs> Anything to save your paper. Anything to push their profits up. It's, it's your Ted Eve's unacceptable face of capitalism. I mean, they don't, they don't care if the rest of us has to rush out and buy new glasses just so we can read their rotten, lousy newspapers. Look at that. Look, look, at, the, look at the state of my hands. The, the print's still wet on them. No worse than the state of your feet when you get into bed. <laughs> you don't read papers with them. That's not the point, is it? It's not the point. <laughs> your printers, your so gats, always screaming out for more money, and they can't even be bothered to block the bleeding newspapers before they send them out. Can't spell, they've got no grammar, lines all out of order. I mean, even if I could read the small print, I wouldn't be able to understand it. I mean, blimey, in the old days. You didn't have to wear a pair of gloves to read a newspaper. You could eat your dinner off them. You used to. <laughs> your mother's tablecloth was a newspaper. Oh, yeah. And what was your mother's tablecloth, eh? At least my mum tried. Yeah. 
There it is. What? The torch. I found it. I knew it wasn't lost. I knew I'd put it somewhere where I could find it. Told you, if you put things where you can find them, you will not lose them. I keep telling you. Oh, go away. <laughs> <laughs> we sat all that time in the dark because of this. What? This torch. When? When I couldn't find it to look for the candles. What candles? The candles I bought for the power cuts. What power cuts? When the miners were on strike. We never had no power cuts when the miners was on strike. We sat in the dark for three days. That was because the bulb had gone. <laughs> <laughs> why wasn't the telly on? Why didn't I do any cooking and why wasn't the fire on? Because you told us there was a power cut and we was daft enough to... <laughs> <laughs> I shall put it back where it is. They drop that bomb, we're gonna need this. <laughs> we'll need it to look for the candles again. <laughs> they won't drop no bomb. You watch too much telly, that's your trouble. You let them frighten you. They dropped it on the Japs. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just trying it out, that's all. <laughs> Gotta see how it works. <laughs> Can't expect her to spend all that money and not try it out. <laughs> anyway, it was only Japs they dropped it on it, that's all. <laughs> I wish they dropped a few more and buggered up their car trade. <laughs> Very nice, was it? Wasn't supposed to be nice. We was at war with them. It was our enemies, the Japs. The Russians was our friends then. Oh, well, they wasn't proper friends, not real friends. They're more like, it was only wartime friends, weren't they? Well, the Japs was only wartime enemies. Yeah, well, <laughs> nothing stays the same, does it? As long as they don't drop the bomb on us, that's all you've got to worry about. Why don't you see someone about your eyes? Who? Who? Optician. Optician? Do you know how much money them opticians made last year? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. Fortunes. <laughs> Bloody fortunes they made. I wouldn't be surprised if your opticians ain't in league with your newspapers. Your Murdoch, your Matthews and... What's that other one, the foreign one? What's his bloody name? The one they call the bouncing check. <laughs> the one with the dyed hair and the false eyebrows. <laughs> Dennis Healy. No! <laughs> that bolshy bastard, no! The, <laughs> the one he... Oh, blimey, what's his name? He, he had a football club. Oh. Elton John. No! <laughs> He's got false hair. So is Bruce Forsyth, so is Frankie Howard, so is Max Bygrave, he wasn't him neither! <laughs> blimey, what's his bloody name? It's household word. What word? Him, his name. What name? His name! It called... Blimey, everybody knows it. You don't. I don't! <laughs> I'm telling me tongue. God, stop. What is... Coffee, coffee. I haven't got any. No, <laughs> his name, his name. Coffee, coffee. Coffee. Nescaf. No! <laughs> coffee! Camp. No, God, no! Well... That's it! Well, Maxwell! Maxwell! <laughs> Maxwell Murdoch and Matthews, the three bad coins of Fleet Street. Wouldn't surprise me they got shares in your eyeglass making business. I mean, it's no wonder they can, they can lash out millions in bingo prizes. You did the bingo? Who'd, I wouldn't stoop so low. I do the pools. It's not the same, is it? A pool's got a bit of brains to do your pools. I mean, any fool can do the bingo. It's not a question of sticking your pin in with the pools. You've got to follow form, my dear. You've got to use your noddle. Or up the road, stuck a pin in one half a million. <laughs> anyway, what do you know about form? You only go to West Ham. I'm not reading this. Look at that. That's criminal, that is. Look, only thing in here in decent sized print is your adverts. Yeah, well, it's all adverts. Of course it is, because that's where they earn their money, isn't it? Adverts. Adverts and bad news, that's all that is. Adverts and bad news. I've got a good mind to cancel that thing. I ain't read nothing good in there for years. Oh. 
TV news is better. TV news. <laughs> And their adverts, their adverts are better too. None of their news is any good. Well, better than most of their programmes, the adverts are. I don't know why they bother telling us if all they got for us is bad news. They come on here on that telly, they're bursting with what they are. Can't wait to ruin our evening. <laughs> we ought to make a few more films that Maggie Thatcher don't like. We won't get no news at all then. <laughs> Rita's goes in the pot. What you keeping that for? I could never get her to sleep without it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we went through the war, didn't we? But even at its worst, it wasn't as bad as their bad news. Well, it's a good thing they did, we didn't have the telly during the war. <laughs> They'd have put that war on the news, we'd have given up. We'd have been too frightened to fight Hitler. You was frightened anyway. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that weatherman, that, that blooming weatherman of theirs. Which one? The BBC one, that cartoon with the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like him, he makes me laugh. Yeah, he gloats, he does. He positively go gloats if he's got something nasty for us. And that low depression there. As if the news we watched ain't a low enough depression already. <laughs> and all that bad weather that you had last week, well, it's all turned around, it's coming back again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, friend, he's got a blooming great BBC fire to sit in front of, hasn't he? Ain't got a manager on two bars of electric like we have. Well, he won't let me turn them both on. Well, if it's cold, I do. If it's cold, you had both on at Christmas. <laughs> And I thought you'd remember much about Christmas, the state you was in. Look, give us that paper. No, give us that. It it's my paper, isn't it? You know I don't like people reading my paper before I do, getting it all out of order, pages missing. Wouldn't be pages missing if you bought toilet rolls. I <laughs> can't afford to waste money on toilet roll. Buy your paper in the morning, read the news, keep it for the TV programmes at night. And the next day, use it for the only thing it's fit for. <laughs> <laughs> and look, don't turn that thing off when I'm talking to you. I've got you that thing so you can hear. I hear what I want to. You're marvellous, eh? Always complaining you can't hear. I'll get you that thing and all you do is turn it off. How can I hold a conversation with you if you keep turning it off? You'll turn that thing off once too often, you will. You'll turn that thing off one day and you'll miss something you want to hear, you see. <laughs> yeah. We'll be sorry then, you see. Bloody waste of money getting you that thing. It's a waste of money. All right, if that's the way you want it. Two can play that game, my dear. Two can play that. Would you like a nice cup of tea and a chalky biscuit? Oh, you heard that, didn't you? We'll see if you hear this. <laughs> You can push your own bloody wheelchair from now on. Oh, Christ. Oh, I've got stuck. Oh, me back. Oh, shut up, you cow. Oh. Oh. Come on, overtake me, overtake me. Are you coming by or not? <laughs> you have to stay in the middle of the road. Yakety, yakety, yak. <laughs> Not on my bloody pension, he couldn't. <laughs> you can pray for him all your life. You can believe in him, in his heaven up above, follow all of his teachings. This is how he treats you. This is how he pays you back. I mean, I've been one of his most loyal supporters all my life, you know that. That's what he does to you. He lets you down, like West Ham. <laughs> he don't look after his own. That's his trouble, isn't it? Not like your Jewish God. He looks half his own. God, blimey, don't see no poor Jews, do you? <laughs> don't see them pushing wheelchairs. Same as your blackies got. 
He looks after his own, doesn't he? He give all them Arabs all that oil, doesn't he? <laughs> See, that's what's so perplexing for us mortals. I mean, according to the good book, there's only the one true religion, right? His religion, God's religion. So all the rest of them's lying, right? But which one's his? <laughs> that's the problem for us mortals. I mean, you can go to church all your life, you know, say your prayers in it, go to his dances, buy tickets, his raffles, and you die. <laughs> You get up there to heaven and you find out it's the wrong one and the one round the corner was the right one all the time. Well, I mean, <laughs> if your religion ain't going to help you get into heaven and all you're going to do is finish up sitting in a wheelchair or pushing one, you might as well have an extra couple of hours in bed of a Sunday morning, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, another load of blackies. You see how your blackies God looks after his own? He's giving them houses now. <laughs> Roses in a garden. It won't last long, be a marjoriana plant soon. What you say? Nothing, I'm talking to myself. Oh, well, that's nice. Because nobody enjoys the sound of your voice more than you do. I am not talking to you, or have you forgotten? Roger and out. <laughs> Here, will you get me an ice cream? Oh, you want to talk now, don't you? Get me an ice cream, Nick. Change our tune now, aren't we? Hey, not so iron mighty now, are we? No, not now we want something. Will you get me an ice corn it? Well, say please then. Oh, I'm not going down on my knees, do you? No one's no. asking you to go on your knees, my dear. Wouldn't hurt you to be a bit civil. I'll do a lot for you. I don't ask much in return. It's not easy for me <laughs> having you like this. There's a lot of men wouldn't take it as easy as I do. There's a lot of men. <laughs> Blimey. You gonna get me an ice cream before he goes? You'll lose him if you keep on. Nursemaid, that's what I'm a bloody nursemaid! Give me some money then. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might like to buy it for me. No, oh, blimey, I'm always laying out I am. What do you think, I'm old muggins? No! Yeah. Not made of money, my dear. And I want change. What, well, out it? That's a pound note you've got there. Ice cream corn, it can't be more than 50p. Well, for two. <laughs> caught me again. Cunning as a cartload of monkeys you are. <laughs> Don't worry, my dear. You've caught me often enough. <laughs> That'll be the day. Short arms and long pockets you are when it comes to spending. Except on yourself at opening time. <laughs> 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 Two cornets. Just a minute, Gough. I'm sorry, love, no wafers, only cornets. I get no call for wafers. Oh, I'll just see what else they want instead. Funny that, isn't it, eh, Gough? She's the umpteenth customer who's asked me for wafers today. Marvellous, isn't it? Do you know, if I'd done wafers, I could have sold over 50 of them this morning. Well, why don't you do wafers, then? Well, there's no call for them, is there? <laughs> 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 now nah, your cornet's easier, isn't it? Yeah. Easy to eat. Easy to eat? You can eat it one hand. You can eat away for one hand. Well, why's there no call from me? 60p. Eh? Talk to yourself here. <laughs> Sorry, Vicar, no change. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the ages. I am the ages. <laughs> Speak up. <laughs> but I am. No, well, I mean, not another one. Hey, marvellous. <laughs> I've ordered this at home. Can you lit read? Pardon? Can <laughs> you. <laughs> God, so if it marvellous. I mean, you think you learnt to lip read, wouldn't you? They never do. My missus, just the same, never thinks it might help if you learnt to lip read. Here, we've got hearing aid there, mate. Turn it on. On, 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 on. No, oh, you're hard of hearing. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I employ some of them, honestly. <laughs> How does he know his prayers have been answered if he can't hear? Right? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> having a vicar praying for you if he can't take messages, is it? <laughs> <laughs> now, vicar, he's even worse. <laughs> he stutters. 
<laughs> Who thinks of Catcher Neely? It's so hard on the knees, I don't think of what that is, isn't it? <laughs> You're not one of that Bishop of Durham's lot, are you? Eh? <laughs> We'd like to be standing next to him when he gets started. How's he know she wasn't a virgin? Wow. Yeah, Vicar. It's 2P. Now, shut <laughs> off. <laughs> 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 Here, top these up first, will you? <laughs> As I say, how thick are we stars? Well, I mean, you can't expect God to listen to him stuttering out his requests. He's a busy man, God, isn't he? It's a big place, heaven. It's a lot for one God. I mean, here's how thick are down on his knees, he's saying, how far, 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 far. I mean, God, he doesn't know somewhere, maybe he's got a point, and you know, he says, come on, come on, spit it out for Christ's sake, ain't got all night. Uh, oh. Six cornets, please. I'm sorry, love. I've sold out. <laughs> And he meant there's no call for wafers. I told him if he got more call for his wafers, there'd be less call for his coolness. He'd been done no better off, would he? I mean, mean so much money in there. Hey, and if you spend all your money on your wafers, you've got nothing left for your coolness and Vicky Valka. <laughs> Point is, you cannot have your cake and eat it. And that is what your trade unions signally fail to realise. Am I right? Am I... Have you got that bloody thing turned off again? <laughs> I won't be a minute. Here, where are you going? I just want to turn me bike round. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Riddle, piddle. I want to go to the lavvy. Turn that bloody thing on. <laughs> Can't you wait till you get home? No, I can't. I'm busted. I won't be a minute. I just want to have a wee wee. I don't want to hear about your business. Well, just wait there a minute. Don't leave me here. Well, when do you expect me to leave you? Well, I can't sit outside here. It's embarrassing. Would it be a bloody sight more embarrassing if I took you in there? With you? <laughs> I'll wait for you there. No, I have seen it, eh? Nag, nag, nag. I'm busting. I'm busting, I am. Satisfied? Far enough away from the lavvy for you? <laughs> uh, excuse me. Do you wish to cross the road? Eh? Oh, no. No, thank you, Vic. It's a pleasure. No bother. <laughs> well, it's very nice of you. Here. No. No, I don't want to go over there. Oh, no. no. Another hour. <laughs> Come on. Come on! <laughs> Tells me to hurry up. No, oh, obviously. Bloody women. Why did it take so long? What if I do in here? I don't know. Hello? Hello? Oh, hello. I'm, I'm looking for a woman. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want? Um, I'm looking for a woman. Oh, go away. No, you see, I've lost my wife. <laughs> I didn't want to come over here. I wanted to stay on that side. You'll have to speak up. My hearing aid isn't working. <laughs> that is flat. Can you lip read? I beg your pardon? My, my hearing aid isn't working. <laughs> Oh, you, you, you wanted to stay on the other side? I told you. Oh, oh I see. You didn't want to cross the road. <laughs> see, my hearing aid isn't working. <laughs> the battery's flat, but you should have told me. You should have said so. <laughs> I did tell you. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I wasn't molesting anybody. Look, if you was doing your job properly, you should be looking for my wife. She's probably been kidnapped. She was sitting here, helpless, a cripple in a wheelchair. Anybody could have took her. She's the one you ought to be worried about, not that old rat bag. You've had complaints <laughs> about someone hanging around these toilets. Well, you don't think it was me, do you? I don't hang around women's toilets. I've got better things to do with my time. What do you think I am, a sexual pervert or something? Do I look like a pervert? <laughs> Decent, mate. 
You ask anyone, any man I see I'm decent, I'm not a rapist. And if I was, it wouldn't be her I'd be after. <laughs> <laughs> if I was up to them sort of tricks, I'd be looking for something a bit better than her. I was looking for my wife. You said she was dead. May the good Lord strike you dead. I never said nothing of the sort. You said you'd lost your wife. I lost, I lost you in a wheelchair, you silly old faggot. I lost <laughs> I went in the car as for Jimmy, and when I come out, she's gone. Kidnapped. Who would want to kidnap your wife? I don't know that, do I, officer? You're the law, aren't you? You're the one who's supposed to know the answer to them questions. I'm just an ordinary citizen. A law-abiding taxpayer. One of them you are supposed to serve and not harass. I went in there for a look. I went in there. I thought my wife might be in there. You're not allowed to go in there. Well, you go in there. You go in and have a look. Go on. I'm not allowed in there either. Why not? You're a policeman. I am also a man. Well, then why don't you get a woman policeman, eh? Use a little bit of initiative, Sonny. Didn't you go to the police college? God, <laughs> no wonder the world's full of terrorists. What's your <laughs> name? I know my rights. Yeah, I'll read them out to you in a minute. Don't need them read out to me, mate. I'm a citizen. A crime has been committed and I'm seeking your assistance in the matter. What crime? The crime of kidnapping. Would one of you like to go in there and see if there's a woman in a wheelchair? There ain't. There ain't no one in there, officer. There ain't no woman in a wheelchair. That's yet. just his story. <laughs> he knows what he's been up to. <laughs> there's been complaints before. I think you'd better come down the station with me. Are you arresting me? No, I'm going to ask you down to the station so we can help you find your wife. We're going to put a net over London. That's what we're going to do, sir. We're going to marshal all our resources in the search for your wife. We're going to alert the airports, put a watch on the docks. Come along, sir. Not a minute to lose. Get your hands off of me. Get your hands off of me. I'll write to my MP. I'll write to Mr. Rainson about this. Get off. I'll push you <coughs> home. Get off of me. Yeah. Oh, 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 yes. It's the matter with you? Bloody report you, mate. I know my <laughs> rights. I know my rights. Get off of me. Bloody lay one on you. Get off. 